Hello, and welcome to yet another episode of I Don't Imagine Anyone's Listening, where I talk about basically whatever I want because I don't imagine that anyone's listening. My name is Monica Murray Dura, editor, writer, bookseller, and for better or for worse, now podcaster. Today, I want to talk about ignorance, specifically my own ignorance. And by that, I mean that although we live in a time where everything is Googleable and look upable, and there's no reason not to know basically anything or not to be able to find out basically anything, there are still massive gaps in my knowledge that I have not bothered to fill. And I don't just mean like books that I haven't read because I wasn't assigned them in school, though goodness knows there's plenty of those. I heard once, I don't know if this is true, it could be made up, that the book people are most likely to lie about having read is 1984 because they feel like they should have read it because it's an important novel or because it's the kind of thing you read in school or both. I haven't read it. We were assigned Animal Farm in school probably because it's shorter. My brother read both, but he went to a different school than I did. So in the spirit of not lying about the things I don't know, i.e. I haven't read 1984, I'm just gonna rattle off some other things that I don't know and I feel like I should. This was prompted not by my discovery that people are likely to lie about having read 1984, but by a different experience. I was recently in a medical office and they were doing all the basic medical things, one of which is checking blood pressure. I have never understood blood pressure numbers. I know there's a number over another number and that it can be high or low or fine. I imagine that the numbers are a ratio of one thing to another. I don't know what those things are. I don't know what the range should be. Uh, I imagine it's probably different for men and women and people of different ages. I don't know any, I don't know anything. And I was reminded that I didn't know this when I was in said medical office. And they put the cuff thing on your arm and they've got the fancy one with the reader built into it. So they don't have to do the like bulb thing where they squeeze the bulb. And anyway, so it tightens on your arm with science or electricity or whatever. And it's got the little reader attached and it does the thing and the reader beeps and... (laughs) The woman looks at it and she goes, oh, this reader has been screwing up. Those numbers can't possibly be right. And I, I had no idea if she was right or wrong. And I still don't know. So she went and she grabbed another one. Oh, we did the whole process again. Different numbers popped up. She was satisfied with those. I don't, I don't know what they meant. I couldn't be bothered to remember the numbers and then look them up later. I couldn't be bothered when I got home to Google normal blood pressure range for 29 year old woman. I could Google that right now. I could Google that at any time, but I'm not going to. This is information I've never needed. I probably should know it, but it's never come up. Like, it's never been an issue that I don't know it. And I think that's what I'm driving at, if I'm driving at anything, which is, to be frank, unlikely. But there are all kinds of gaps in my knowledge (laughs) that have not been detrimental. I'm still going to go through them anyway, just because I find it mildly amusing. And we've got to fill the minutes with something now, don't we? I've also discovered that there's a pattern in the things that I don't know, or at least broad categories that the things I don't know fall into, that they fall into. And um, they're often geography or car related. For example, I know nothing about the geography of the Midwest. I had no idea that Milwaukee and Chicago were close to each other. I assume that all the major cities in the Midwest are incredibly far apart. Then I looked at a map and I was like, oh no, they're not that far apart. They're relatively close together. And I was telling a friend this and she said, well, you don't live there, so why would you know that? And I went, fair enough, but I don't live in California. And yet I know the geography of the major cities of California. I know which ones are roughly north and roughly south and roughly in the middle. I know that San Diego is in the south and that Sacramento is in the middle, slightly northish. I know that Los Angeles is also in the south, but not as far south as San Diego. I've been to California one time in my life. I have no plans to go back. And yet, I know more about the geography of a place I have no connection to than I do of the Midwest, where I have multiple friends and family members. And I have been to the Midwest 
more than once, and yet I could not be bothered to learn the geography. I don't know if this is more about me or America as a whole and how there is sort of an idea that people on the coast just ignore the middle of the country for no good reason, even though lots of people live there and loads of important things happen there, but for some reason we can't be bothered to learn where the cities are. Anyway, I don't want to get too into that because I'm afraid it will reveal more things than I care to discover. Suffice to say, I don't know anything about where things are in the Midwest, and Midwestern friends, I'm sorry. I'm attempting to learn these things by looking at maps and also googling distance between city A and city B. So perhaps... I am rectifying some of my own ignorance. I'm not going to bother with learning the blood pressure thing, but I might Google major U.S. cities and at least find out where they are in relation to each other. As to car things that I don't know, some of these I think are forgivable now because cars are now computers on wheels and I shouldn't attempt to repair anything in my own vehicle because I can't fix it even if I understood the concepts of what was wrong with it. Back in the day, you used to be able to change your own oil. I've never changed my own oil. I've always paid someone to do that for me because I'm definitely going to mess it up. And now cars are even fancier and there's synthetic oil. That's a thing. Anyway, I can't be bothered to learn that, but that's not really important. That's a thing. I think that's always been an acceptable thing, at least for women not to know how to do because there are, you know, mechanics or male family members who will do these things for you. But I feel like I've, I've often heard or been told that I should know how to change a tire. I don't know how to do that. I don't know if I plan to learn how to do that. I have AAA. I can call them. I know in theory, cell service dead zones exist. But I don't think I'm in them often enough to learn this skill. And this could be a lack of foresight on my part. This could be a terrible idea. Like next week I could blow out a tire and everyone will be like, haha, can't believe you did that. You should have learned how to change a tire, you lazy rube. And you'd probably be right. But then there are even basicer things which are very, very simple that I have never done before. Like change my windshield wipers. I've never changed my own windshield wiper blades. I bought them gone into the store and been like this is my car and then they go great these are the wiper blades that fit your car or I've gone on the internet and put in the model of my car and then the internet tells me these are the ones you need and I go great and then I buy them but then I've never put them on myself I've always asked somebody else to do it for me or someone else has volunteered to do it for me and I've never had the wisdom to be like, let me tag along and observe how this is done. I do know how to change a headlight though. That's something I've had to do many times. Maybe, maybe that, if again, I have a point that I'm driving at, which again, very unlikely, is that we learn how to do things as we need to know them. So I had a car whose front passenger headlight Of course, it's a front headlight. Headlights are always on the front. But the passenger side headlight went out a lot. It was probably something wrong, but it doesn't matter. I don't own that car anymore. And because it went out a lot, I had to change a lot. So I got quite good at changing it. And I imagine the same would go if there weren't people around who volunteered to change out my windshield wiper blades. I'm sure I could figure it out. As previously stated, I have access to Google. And even if I don't have a point, I at least have a wondering. And I'm wondering if me not knowing relatively basic things is specific to me as an individual or specific to me as a person who lives in the time that I do and was born into the generation that I was, i.e., Were people in the past more resourceful because they were more curious or because they had to be? Is complacency or my complacency specifically a fault in myself or a effect of my circumstances? Not that it's forgiven either way. Just curious as to the cause. Do other people wonder (laughs) 
Like, if I were to survey several people my age and say 10 years plus or minus on each side and ask them if they had certain skills and then follow up with how they acquired certain skills, would more of them say, I acquired this skill because I had to know how to do this thing? Or would more of them say, I was curious to know how to do this thing, so I taught myself how to do it? And then, if I could travel back in time, 50 or 100 years, and ask that same age group the same questions, would it be any different? I think I'm going to cut myself off there because I I may have approached a point and I I don't want to ruin it by rambling on too much. So, it'll be a short one. I don't think anyone will object to that. I certainly wouldn't. So if you've uh, stuck around (laughs) this long into this uh, rambling that may or may not have a point, the jury's still out. Uh, Thanks for listening since I recorded and uh, published my last two episodes. Uh, A handful of people have listened. Uh, I probably know all of you personally, but thanks for listening anyway. And if there's anyone out there who I I don't know, um, thank you even more for listening. I hope you come back. If you have friends you can tell them about me if you have friends that you'd like to inflict my voice upon more specifically you can tell them if you want more of me and different media um you can find me on twitter and instagram those links are in the episode notes i also have a website monicamurrider.com it is not very interesting or informative but it it does exist so you can go click over there and give me some traffic if you're feeling generous anyway uh thanks for listening i hope you didn't hate it and uh perhaps i will uh see is the wrong word but i don't have a better one so i will uh see you next time thank you for listening